Sometime around 1850, Sir Charles Wheatstone and Lord Lyon Playfair brought a proposal for a new type of secret encrypting method for protecting telegraphed messages to the British Foreign Office. This method, now commonly known as Playfair's cipher, was groundbreaking work in the progression of encryption methods. However, Wheatstone and Playfair were ejected by the officials. The officials claimed the method was too complicated to be put into use. Wheatstone, willing to bet on it, offered to demonstrate that three out of four boys in a nearby school could learn to use it in just 15 minutes. But the undersecretary of the foreign office responded, that is very possible, but you could never teach it to attaches. So we're left with the question, how hard is the Playfair encryption method? Did you and your friends ever invent secret languages so you could communicate without others knowing? If so, it may have looked something like a substitution code, one of the simplest forms of code. A substitution code operates by assigning each letter of the alphabet to another symbol. These symbols could be numbers, letters, or even small drawings or doodles. The great weakness of these codes, also known as substitution ciphers, is that they're susceptible to being cracked by what we call frequency analysis. For example, E is the most common letter in the English language, followed by A, then R, and so on. So a malicious eavesdropper need only sort the symbols in your encoded text by frequency, and they have a good chance of identifying which symbols have been used to replace these common letters. Once the eavesdropper has a few letters decoded, they can search for patterns that occur in common words, such as be, and, of, or the. Once a handful of letters are associated with their corresponding symbol, it doesn't take very long to decrypt the rest of the message. This one-to-one -one replacement of letters, no matter how creative the symbols used, will always be vulnerable to these types of attacks. Wheatstone and Lord Playfair were the first in cryptologic history to encrypt letters as pairs instead of individually. The idea was to add an element of diffusion, meaning one change in the plain text, the message not yet encrypted, has a large change in the cipher text, the message after it's encrypted. With substitution ciphers, the letter T was always sent to the same place regardless of what word it was a part of. But in Playfair cipher, it takes a pair to determine where T gets sent to. Then T's replacement will be different depending on if the word being encrypted is at or it or to. This makes the cipher less vulnerable to attack by standard frequency analysis. So how do we use this new complex cipher? The first step to using the cipher is creating a 5x5 five five table. We create this table using a secret key, knowing this key is what allows someone to decrypt and read the message. Often the key was a word or a short phrase, though it doesn't need to be. Say your secret key is blueberry pancakes. We would start by using the letters from our key to form the 5x5 five five box. We use the letters in our secret key to arrange the letters of the alphabet in our 5x5 five five box. So we start with B-L-U-E, then we've already used B and E, so we move on to R, then Y, P, A, N, C. Again, A has already been used, so we continue with K, past the redundant E, and finally S. We then fill in the rest of the square with the remaining letters of the alphabet, in alphabetical order, starting with D, then F, G, H, I. Here we need to make note of something special. There are 26 letters in the English alphabet and only 25 spaces in our 5x5 five five box. So Playfair's solution to this is to treat I and J as the same letter, trusting that any words that have I's in place of where J's normally reside could still be understood with some consideration. We pick up again with M, O, Q, T, V, W, X, Z. Now we have our table. We can encrypt our message. Playfair's cipher works by encoding in pairs. Then based on the location of the two letters in the table, one of three rules is applied. One, if the letters fall in the same row, then shift them both one letter to the right. Two, if the letters fall in the same column, shift them both down. And three, if the letters are neither in the same row nor column, then consider the rectangle that is made with those letters as opposing corners and move each letter to the opposite corner within the same row. Let's look at an example. Suppose the secret communication is, we ride at dawn. So we consider the letters W and E first. They form a skinny rectangle and W is sent to X while E is sent to U. R and I also form a rectangle and R is sent to L while I is sent to Q. 
the rectangle made by D and E sends D to F and E to U, and the one made by A and T sends A to Y and T to W. D and A fall in the same column, so D is shifted down to M and A to D. Finally, W and N is sent to X and A. Notice how at one point D was sent to F and at another it was sent to M? This is what made Playfair Cipher so revolutionary and resistant to standard frequency analysis. There is a problem to address, however. What if I had wanted to ride at noon? If maybe noon was the message, M, A, Y, B, E, N would all encrypt just fine. But where do you send O, O? The solution was to place a non-problematic letter, such as X, between the repeated letters. So the message reads, maybe, N-O-X-O-N, and we continue encrypting O-X and O-N. So how could my friend read my encrypted message? He simply takes the encoded message or ciphertext and using the same table which he can construct using the secret key, he simply follows the same three rules in reverse. If the letters fall in the same row, then shift them both one letter to the left. If the letters fall in the same column, shift them up and finally, if the letters are neither in the same row nor column, then consider the rectangle that's made by them and move each letter to the opposite corner within the same row. X, U forms a rectangle and becomes W, E. L, Q becomes R, I. The letters F and U become D and E. Y, W become A, T. M and D are in the same column but this time we move them up since they were moved down when they were encrypted, and we get DA, then X and A become WN. We can recreate the original message, we ride at dawn. This took even less than the 15 minutes Wheatstone suggested. Despite the initial rejection, Playfair Cipher was later used by British forces in the Second Boer War and in World War I, and by the British, Australians, and the New Zealand government during World War II. This is because Playfair is reasonably fast to use and requires no special equipment, just a pencil and some paper. Revolutionary as it was, this cipher still had many exploitable weaknesses, such as the fact that the uncommon letters such as X or Z often end up at the bottom of the table and that consistent placement results in patterns that are exploitable, or that a secret key still needs to somehow be safely communicated. Can you think of other weaknesses this cipher might have? How would you make it better? Let us know in the comments. We have a code on the screen for you to decipher and the secret key so you can build the 5x5 table. You can put what you calculated as the deciphered message in the comments. But if you do, please start your comment with spoiler alert and put the code several lines down so you don't spoil it for others. In future videos, we'll take a closer look at frequency analysis and other ways we can use mathematics to break ciphers. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share our videos. Be sure to follow Math the World on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you so much for your support.